but how to network, what to do when you, when you have the contacts. Everybody can do this. So click on networking emails. Almost everything is on here. There are two major problems out there in the, in the world of finding a job. The number one problem is it is now so easy to apply for jobs online. You could submit tons of applications and they're going to go to, to websites and all that kind of stuff. The second problem compounds the first. Uh, most of us only know about one to 2% of the organizations that exist in the world today. A company like Adobe, they get thousands of applications every single day. We had a couple of years ago, a lot of students coming to us and saying, hey, I've applied for a job at Adobe and I've heard nothing from them. So we reached out to uh, someone that we know up at the Lehigh site. He said, do not ever have your students apply online. Our online system is a black hole. What goes in never comes back out, so don't. He said, the only good thing about our job uh, site online is to see what jobs we are hiring for. So you're probably asking the same question we asked him. Okay, so what should our students do? He basically said, if they want to work for Adobe, have them reach out to the hiring manager or the manager, okay, over that team that they're interested in. And yeah, they might have to do some digging and send them an email and reach out to them and let them know that there's interest. He said, I'll have them send me a resume. And if I like them, I'll walk it over to the HR folks and we'll bring them in. So what the concept is that we have found that we've been able to train our students on is to reach out to the people who you have interest in, set up what we call an informational interview, where you can ask questions that will actually help you. Send them an email, send them a networking email. Find out if, if, if those people can help you. So when you start your email, you wanna just basically keep it short and to the point and make it easy to say yes to. Imagine whoever you're sending it to is gonna get that email right before they have to run into a meeting. What you want is for them to be able to read it be impressed by it and just be able to just have them respond. Yes, I would love to meet with you. Please uh, set up a cup or please send, send a couple of options. Boom. And then they're off to their meeting. So keep it short. No, no, no longer than 75, 80 words. This is really key. No mention of a job. What you're trying to do is gain, relate, uh, gain information and build relationships. The connection goes first. You want to explain how you're connected. Then you generalize your interest. You know, I'd, I'd love to talk to you about your experience with XYZ industry. Subject lines. Subject lines, I think, are really important, especially when you're reaching out to somebody that you don't know, they don't know you. What's going to cap, capture their attention? Imagine, if you will, project yourself five, six, seven years down the road. You've landed a, just this awesome job. And, and you're sitting at your desk one day, or you're sitting in your home, at your home or office, and an email pops up, BYU Arabic Studies student seeks your advice. Is that going to, is that going to stand out to you? How are you going to feel about that? Yeah, I think it would feel really nice instead of like BYU student looking for a job or something like that. Like right. I agree. And most people agree with that. That's why I think this is a, this is a, a really good approach. So number one is BYU. If it's an Arabic studies major, that's probably going to resonate even more. You're like, wow, but seeks your advice. Say you, you draft a really, you, I mean, you find someone you really want to talk to, you draft this nice, concise, to the point, professional email, and you send it off. And then you don't hear anything for many days. My rule of thumb, and a lot of my colleagues will, will preach this, wait three business days, give them a chance, um, but then follow up with a nice, <clears throat> friendly follow-up. Remember, you're, basically what you're asking for is you're asking for a favor. You're asking for time. People are willing, willing to do people favors. So three days, follow up with a friendly reminder. I think it's good to follow up for many, many reasons. Number one, a lot of people will blow people off for the first time. If you come back, they're like, oh, this person's serious. Oh, yeah, I forgot to get back with them. So let's say that you have an appointment with somebody next Thursday at 11. The day before, send them an email. Basically say, thank you. Thank you for agreeing to, to visit with me tomorrow at 11 a.m. I just wanted to confirm that that time still works for you. 
Also, I've listed a couple of my main questions below. Thought you might like to see some of the questions in advance. If you don't hear from them after the follow-up, move on to somebody else. There's really only two times during the week that I really am hesitant to send anything. Monday mornings before lunch, and then Friday afternoons after lunch. Step number five, there's the networking emails, there's the informational interviews. This is the basics, uh, an informational interviews, a meeting or a phone call, in which you're trying to get information. Step one is to do some research. Also research the companies or the organizations that they're working for. Uh, step two, the discussion, hold the conversation, just a little small talk, and then transition to the, to the Q&A. Okay, and then follow up, uh, kind of, uh, you'll definitely want to send a thank you note 